Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about binomial probabilities. Um, today we're going to focus mainly on the exact probabilities. Um, now this is the formula that we use for it. I know it looks a little scary, but as we do problems, I promise it'll be a little bit easier. So let's first outline what each variable stands for in the formula. N here is the number of trials, or the total that you are starting with. R is the number of events that you wish to obtain out of the total. P is the probability that the event will occur. But I want you to put in parentheses one trial here. Because when we take the probability that the event will occur, we take it based off of one event occurring. And the next piece is Q, where Q is the probability that the event will not occur. So what do I mean by all this? Let's read example one. It says, when rolling a die, a hundred times. What is the probability of rolling a 4 exactly 25 times? So exactly 25 out of the 100. So if we think about it, the number of trials that we have in this problem right here is 100 because we are rolling the die 100 times. So that's my n. So we're going to write that over here on the side. n is 100. So we're rolling the die 100 times and we want to obtain a 4 25 times. So my R is 25. Out of the 100, we want to get a 4 25 times. So P is the probability that the event will occur. And by, I'm talking about the event, it's this part right here. What is the probability of rolling a 4? Well, what's the probability of rolling the 4 just theoretically? You're going to tell me 1 out of 6. So that's my probability P, that the event occurs is 1 out of 6. What would be my Q then? You should be telling me 5 out of 6. Okay, so now we're just going to put it all together. So let's write the formula. N, C, R. It might be easier instead of putting the multiplication dot to put parentheses. P to the R, Q to the N minus R. So again, my N is 100. My R is 25. My P is 1 over 6. My R is 25, my Q is 5 over 6, my N is 100, and my R is 25. So now this just becomes a calculator problem. But before we put that in the calculator, let's simplify this, please, and make it 100 minus 25. So in the calculator, put it in as 75. So in the calculator, type this whole entire thing, pause the video, and see if you get the same answer that I get. I got 0 .0098. If you didn't get that, don't stress about it because we can talk about the calculator steps tomorrow in class. But the goal for right now is just to make sure you understand the concept of setting this up. So if that one was a little tricky for you, let's try again. Let's try number two. So number two says, what is the probability of obtaining exactly eight heads in ten tosses of a fair coin? Okay, so what is the total number of times that I'm tossing this coin? You should be telling me 10. So therefore, my n is 10. And I want to obtain 8 heads out of the 10 tosses. So my r is 8. And now we need a p and a q. p is the probability that the event occurs. What is the event that we're talking about? The event is rolling a heads. So we want to consider it theoretically. So in one particular case, if I were to toss a coin once, what would be the probability that I get a heads? You should be telling me 1 out of 2. So that's my probability that the event occurs, 1 half. The probability that it doesn't occur is 1 half. Okay, so now let's write down the formula again. And CR, P to the R, Q to the N minus R. So my N in this case is 10. My R is 8. My P is a half, my R is 8, Q is a half, and N is 10, R is 8. But we're not going to put this into the calculator as 10 minus 8. We're going to change it to 2 and put that whole thing in. Again, practice putting into the calculator. Your answer should be 45 over 1024. If you're not getting this in the calculator, don't stress We'll go over the calculator rules in class tomorrow, but I want to make sure you're getting this stage, getting the setting up of it. 
And why did I leave it as a fraction? Because it said leave the answer in simplest fraction form. Okay, let's try another example. But before we start it, let's just put down what we need. We need an N, we need an R, we need a P, and we need a Q. So what is my N? Well, let's read the problem first. It says, when Joe bowls, he can get a strike 60% of the time. Determine the exact probability that Joe bowls exactly zero strikes in four tries. So what is my N? What is my total number of tries? And you should be telling me four. He's tried to bowl four times. Okay, and what is my R? What is the number out of four that you want him to get? Well, it says, what is the probability that Joe bowls exactly zero strikes? So R is zero. And what is the probability P that he actually gets a strike? Well, it tells you right here, 60% of the time. And we can put that in as 0.6 or 0.60. It's appropriate to put it in as a decimal. And what would be my Q? What's the probability that he doesn't get a strike? Well, then we would say 0.4. So let's write down the formula again. So n c r p to the r q to the n minus r. So what is my n? My n is 4. My r is 0. My p is 0.6 or 0 0.60. r is 0. q is 0.4. And my n is 4. My r is 0. But again, we're not going to put into the calculator 4 minus 0. We're just going to subtract it and put 4. So go ahead, try to put this whole piece into the calculator, pause the video, and see if you get what I get. I got 0 .0256. But the question says to round it. Well, it doesn't really say to round. It says determine the exact probability. And when I mean exact, I mean I want a fraction. So the regents will always say this, but they won't tell you that. So if you put the decimal answer, it's technically wrong. The answer should be 16 over 625 after you hit math, enter, enter. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Okay, number four. At a certain intersection, the light for eastbound traffic is red for 15 seconds, yellow for 5 seconds, and green for 30. Find the probability, rounded to the nearest thousandth, that out of the next 8 eastbound cars that arrive randomly at the light, exactly 3 of them will be stopped by a red light. Okay, so we're going to have to put our variables here on the side again. N equals, R equals, P equals, and Q equals. Okay, so what's my n? What is the total number of cars that they're talking about here? It tells you that out of the next eight eastbound cars, so that's eight, exactly three, so three out of the eight, will be stopped by a red light. So what is the probability? We don't have a probability here. We do, it's, it's hidden. How do I find the probability that the traffic light is red? That's what we need here, because it says it will be stopped by a red light. So for, for this piece right here for P, it's the probability that the light is red. Well, we could do a part over a whole. What part of the light is red? It tells you right here, red for 15 seconds. Out of how long? All we need to do is add up 15, 5, and 30. You add up 15, 5, and 30 you'll get 50. So that means in every 50 seconds, the light is going to change between yellow, green, and red. So 15 out of 50 is how long it is red for. So then what would be my Q? You would simply subtract, so 35 out of 50. So now we have the N, C, R, P to the R, Q to the N minus R. So N is 8, C, 3 is R, P is 15 out of 50, R is 3, Q is 35 out of 50, N is 8, R is 3. Again, we're not going to put the N 8 minus 3 in there. We're going to put it in as 5 because that's when we subtract it. So go ahead, put this into the calculator, see what you get. You should get 0.254. Okay, next question. Number 5. The probability that Kayla will score above a 90 on a math test is 4 out of 5. Which expression represents the probability that she will score above a 90 on exactly 3 of the 4 tests this quarter? 
Okay, so if it's a multiple choice question, I always like to do the problem first. So let's do it on our own. N equals, R equals, P equals, Q equals. So how many tests does she have? Four, so N is four. R is exactly three. P, the probability that she gets above a 90 is four out of five. What's the probability that she doesn't? One out of five. So now all you have to do is use the formula. N, C, R, P to the R, Q to the N minus R. So what is my N? 4, C, 3 for R, P is 4 out of 5, R is 3, Q is 1 fifth, and 4 minus 3. So which one matches that? Pause the video. Okay, you should get A. A is the correct answer. All right, so what I would like you to do now is I would like you to try questions five, uh, I'm sorry, six and seven. So please do six and seven for homework. We will go over all of these in detail tomorrow. Six and seven, both parts. Six is a little bit tricky, and so is seven. I want you to think a little bit. You're going to need a hint for six is that you're going to need to simplify the formula. I'm going to write simplify the formula. You can't just plug it into the calculator. I mean, you can, but I want you to think about this one a little bit. So we'll start off class tomorrow by going over 6 and 7. All right, good luck.